while our row cover did work for squash bugs so far, it hasn't helped with cucumber beetles. And joining us is Dr. Eric Reback, who is our extension entomologist. Dr. Reback, what do we need to do to battle these uh, cucumber beetles? Well, first of all, there are uh, obviously we have a lot of damage on your squash, and they do prefer cucurbit crops, mm -hmm. uh, such as cucumbers and squash and zucchini. Um, there's two species that we deal with, um, and you can kind of see both species flying around in the garden. We have uh, striped cucumber beetle and we have spotted cucumber beetle as well. Um, and your floating row covers are actually one way to try to eliminate um, access to the crop for both the squash bug and your cucumber beetles. And I need to mention, we just have left our row cover off because it got a little high maintenance opening it and closing it every absolutely, morning. Absolutely, absolutely. Plus you're also flowering right now and that's when you want to keep the cover True. off because you want pollinators to have access as well so you have fruits. We noticed these cucumber beetles um, about five days ago mm -hmm. and then came back over the weekend and this has happened. Yeah. So they're small insects but they can really do a number on your cro crop quickly. And Absolutely. So you can see the foliar damage. Um, they kind of skeletonize the leaves as we see here um, through their feeding activity as the, in the adult stage. Right now there's a lot of mating going on too and so egg laying is happening. The females are uh, laying the eggs in the soil and then those larvae hatch from those eggs and they'll tunnel into the roots of the plant as well. So it's a double whammy. You have the problem with the, the, the foliage that's being consumed and then the tunneling into the roots as well. And they're doing some damage on the fruit that we have too. They're kind yeah, of... they might be sampling some of the fruits as well um, as, they're, as they're feeding. One also uh, important thing to point out about their biology is they are um, vectors, uh, important vectors of a mosaic uh, virus uh, mm -hmm. that affects cucurbits um, as well as bacterial wilt. And okay. so you get the direct damage and then you have the indirect damage from the, the, from the disease transmission. So we don't want these in the garden. We do not want these in the garden. <laughs> so how do we get rid of them at this point? Okay, so at this point what I would recommend doing is um, an insecticide application um, and you can use broad spectrum treatments. Uh, Things like uh, Seven, um, Carbaryl is the active ingredient in that. Um, these are over-the-counter, uh, readily available for uh, home use. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also some other broad spectrum compounds as well. Wide variety of homeowner products for uh, for vegetable pest control, for home, home fruit and vegetable And they're, they're wide, broad uh, spectrum, and so we always have to worry about our pollinators. Absolutely. So timing of those applications is critical. Morning would be great, or um, so early morning or uh, later into the evening to make those applications would be perfect to avoid contact with your beneficials, your pollinators, your predators, and your parasitoids. Okay. Are there any organic options? There are. Um, so we have uh, kaolin clay. Um, it's a product called Surround. Um, basically, it's a chalky white um, solution that you spray. Um, it covers the leaves. It covers the fruits. When it dries, um, it's not impenetrable, but it's certainly a deterrent uh, to, uh, to uh, further feeding okay. by the beetles or from even squash bugs that might still be uh, in the garden as well. And and I want to mention the color on the leaves here is actually just the variety of uh, squash that's that we right. have. But, that's right. So that's not the insect or no, the clay. No, it's definitely this feeding damage that we're seeing here. And, you, and yeah, you haven't spray, um, sprayed any of your kale and clay. Neem oil is another option, okay. another organic option that we can try to uh, put in there as well. That, uh, it's a botanically derived uh, compound and we can put that out, spray it. Um, I believe the label says every few days you can reapply depending and you've had a heyday you brought them out you planted them and when summer hit um, we have this abundance of these beetles and so you really need to stay on top of it and, and reapply um, frequently uh, with those products. And we've noticed in a couple of other areas where we have some squash planted with okra They've sampled some of sure. the other plants, but they definitely favor the squash. They, they do, and that brings up a good point with another uh, management method, and that's trap cropping. So um, they really love uh, blue hubbard squash, okay. and so if you can plant around the uh, perimeter of where you're planting your primary summer squash, your zucchini, what have you, um, they're going to feed on that primarily first. And you can direct your spray application or other management strategy to that trap crop as you go. Um, and still be mindful of watching what's happening in the crop itself, of course, too. But it reduces the amount of pesticides that you might be putting on the crop. Right, on the edible after. crop, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, you can also, in conjunction with the trap crops, you can use cucumber beetle traps, okay. um, which might also be effective uh, for trapping them out. Basically, it's a yellow sticky card that, that draws them in. Um, and they get stuck on that on that, that backing, that sticky um, trap. Okay, all right. So are our plants hopeless at this point? 
I wouldn't say hopeless, okay. uh, but we certainly <laughs> want to get on top of it. And of course, we're not going to be able to reverse the damage that's already been done. But as the plants continue to grow, they're going to put more foliage on so they'll be able to photosynthesize and, um, and flower and produce more fruit. And then we just need to make sure we watch for any of the disease symptoms a of the wilt and stuff. That's exactly right. Okay. Well, thank you for joining us, Absolutely, Dr. Reback. Casey. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.